here in downtown Atlanta. I'm at the Civic Center. We're here listening to Minister Louis Farrakhan get ready to do his famous speech. Um, very exciting moment for us at the radio station. We're very proud to be a part of it. Hopefully, we'll be able to come to you guys with some interviews. We'll get a, we'll get a chance to talk to some of the brothers around the area and we'll, you know, kind of let them give us a good idea as to what was, what's going on. So stay tuned and we'll be back in a minute. We are back once again. This is Spencer. I think we got an interview. We're standing here live, right here from the very podium where the minister himself just spoke. And it's such an honor that we're bringing it to you live from WRUG Radio. Check it out, and we'll be back real soon. But I think we got an interview coming. Let's go. Oh, well, I did. I said, this is the podium from where the minister just spoke himself. And I'm standing here, south feet and everything. So we'll be back in a little bit, man. Let's go. Are you ready? I'm standing with a wonderful man of God. He was in the presence of the tennis with the Farrakhan. Um, I got a chance to listen to you speak. Oh. Represent how you're holding it down for the city of Atlanta. Just give us a, a brief take on how important it was. I think, that, I think tonight was very significant. And Memphis is very close to me since I'm a Tennessee State graduate. Oh, okay. Tennessee and I. So what's, what's, what's so important tonight is that we as a people, whether we're in the nation of Islam or whether we're Christian, that we've got to come together and look at all the forces that have divided us as a people. And we've got to come together now to begin to work toward our own freedom in terms of economic, political, and spiritual freedom. So I think the minister outlined that from a very precise and profound way. And it's got to be clear that we can no longer allow other people, other forces to, to uh, distract us from the focus that we as a people need to be moving toward. And that is the freedom of us economically, politically, and certainly spiritually to be connected to God, who's the God of all people. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to shake you. Oh, man, yeah. No. But, um, we're, we're a part of that 13 million that's watching. They, they, they brought us down to um, oh. stream on our website, you WRUG Radio. Are you, you, are you, are you from Memphis? We are. You didn't yeah. born in all that. Yes, sir. Because uh, my senior year, I ran against a guy uh, for, tennis, for student government president of Tennessee State. You know what his name was? John Ford. <laughs> Harold Ford, his brother, was his campaign <laughs> man. And I beat John. So go all the way back. And when Lou Harold was born, I was living in D.C. But we, we go all the way back. Oh, there he is. So it's good to be here tonight. Y'all okay. keep getting the message out that we can no longer allow differences, petty differences, and some that we think are major, to separate us as a people to move us to a free. We're live with the assistant editor of the Final Call newspaper out of uh, Chicago, Brother Asad Muhammad. Brother Asad Muhammad, he's been a great assistant to us, and a great help to us. Tonight. This brother is at the top of his game, but he is a humble brother. I'm, take, I'm taking it back to Memphis with me. A part of this guy's attitude. Because I was. <laughs> yeah, nah. when we blow up your way. We, we got to get him his own show. At WRUG, yeah, we got to get him his own show. Let him do this thing. This cat is all right. But um, the minister's message tonight, uh, he said a couple of things that uh, touched my heart. One of them was like black athletes. And, um, and as I mentioned to Brother Tony Muhammad uh, about a book I read called $40 Million Slave, which kind of encompasses. It's all that and, and uh, some of Dr. Claude Anderson's piece, yes. pieces of uh, uh, black labor, white wealth. Uh, these messages, just what, what do you think we can do? And all of us who heard this message to take it back to the people to push those messages back out to people and, and to make it plain. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people want to, when you, when you talk like that, they want to run away from it because they think it's hate speech. But it's not hate speech, it's, 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 it's fair speech. Know yourself and, and be able to handle business without other people thinking you're trying to take something from them. You know what I'm saying? In this country, we tend to believe in order for black people to do this, white folks have to do this. And all we really want to do, all we really want to do is raise, lift ourselves up. You know, so what can we do with young people to take this message back to them and to get them to hear it? I think one of the important things that you mentioned, especially about the athletes and what Minister Farrakhan talked about, is the fact that we need to begin to care about one another. Our businesses, 
our athletes, our entertainers, we need to look out for each other. A lot of our business relationships, the reason we don't do business together is because we don't trust each other. Yeah. And so we have to build up this level of trust. Black radio stations, black newspapers, black people in the media. Mm -hmm. We need to start building up that trust so that when I have an opportunity, I don't feel like it's just an opportunity for me. I'm figuring out a way to take that opportunity and then open it up so that other people can benefit from that opportunity. That's good stuff. That's good yeah. stuff. Man. Well, I just I just want to say, man, it, it was an, it was an indeed a pleasure to be here. We appreciate everything that you were able to do for us. We didn't think that we were gonna. We, we actually came prepared to be, you know, in the proper attire, but you know, we had to stick with the yeah, we, 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 yeah. yeah. we couldn't dare go home right. and change. <laughs> everything worked out the way it's supposed to work out. And now, you know, you know, just for everybody that's listening, that will listen. We got a chance to be on both sides of the spectrum. And we don't even know how well we had it. We had our own room, our own bathroom, backstage access, while all the other media sources were stuck in the audience and couldn't get anything close to right. WRUGradio.com, we're live here at the Atlanta, at the Atlanta, at the Atlanta Civic Center. We are with uh, Mr. Tony Muhammad out of Los Angeles. Uh, the West Region, right? Yeah, West I'm the Western Region. Everything West West of the Mississippi. Everything okay. West of the Mississippi. He has a whole lot of territory he has to have. Yes, sir. He has his hands full of in Los Angeles by itself. Uh, Brother Muhammad, um, I noticed the minister talked about something that, that caught my ear and, uh, and uh, touched my heart when he mentioned the um, basketball players and athletes. Yes, sir. Um, any, any, uh, you talked about that? Any, um, any comments you want to make on that, just to follow up on that? I know I thought it was interesting. Right. Uh, I mean, we plan to do a show uh, actually about that type of athletes, basketball players, and the payment system, especially the college system. Yes, sir. Um, anything you want to touch on as far as what he mentioned about that? Well, everything, first of all, I want to thank those of you for allowing us this opportunity to have anything to say to the world. Everything that the minister have said about our athletes and our entertainers. I happen to live in Los Angeles. And in Los Angeles, the entertainers reach out for me often because they get to a point where they realize that they're just a tool and they're just a slave in the hands of many Jewish record labels, many Jewish television companies, they meet with me in private and the things that they say, how they have been trapped and have they gotten caught up. So they are rich, but they're not free. They are rich, but they're sad. They're rich, but their heart is broken. And it breaks their heart to see the many youth who are attracted into that vacuum by which they, which they get their blood sucked. And many of them are proud that the minister is having this kind of lecture because we got to flip that now. Many of them are powerful enough to where we should distribute our own music, come up with our own TV shows. We should be our own psychologists and say the effect that we want it to have on our hood. You're about to see something change now. Well, just, just to piggyback off what he just said, WRUG Come on, Radio. WRUG. We are we're streaming in 106 different countries. Wow. This is not just radio. This is television for the internet, and we are going to produce this for the world to see. So we give me, actually. Give me that, uh, give, what is it again? It's WRUG Radio. And we'll, we'll right, give you brothers and sisters, it's W. G Radio. See, this is what I'm talking about. W R U G Radio. Black owned, black operated, black creativity. This is what we have to have, and that's why we thank God for the internet. Because through that medium, we're coming at you right at your brain with nothing but truth from W R U G Radio and its great founders. You better recognize. That's it. That's amazing. I, I, I enjoy it. I like where this, where this brother comes from. We got to get you on on our show. Yeah. Even, even if it's by phone, we can do a show by Be phone. With us one night. At the round table, we got to get you on there. This brother has a great mind. I can already tell just about the things he just spoke with us just now. Um, and then back to the athletes and, things, and, and what you mentioned. That is, uh, William C. Roden wrote a book called $40 Million Slave. Yes. Wonderful book. Wonderful book. And we're going to do Must a whole read. show around, around that. Uh, I think it was Stokely Carmichael or one of the guys back in the day said, um, college basketball.